that's the dryer. You hear that squeak? Sometimes it gets very, very much louder than that. Um, I think the part that's going to fix it is this part right here. Whoops. Hold on. Okay, a little trouble with my exposure there. This is the part I think it's going to fix it. It's bearing basically at the back of the drum that holds the drum. And there's the part number. 53032811153. So let's put it in and see if it helps. You are going to need to take the drum out of the front of the dryer. So that means you need full access to the front and the back. So in my case, I have to disconnect the power cord, the gas connection, which is right there in the middle of the screen, and the vent. So I disconnected all those three things. Now I'm gonna try and swivel this like 90 degrees so I can get access to the front and the back and still walk around it. Let's see. Okay, I think I might be able to do the job from here. Now we're going to start removing some panels. The front panel, that bottom panel. You, you will notice that this one is, this dryer is on top of a storage bin. So disregard that. That's just a storage bin. Okay, that's not part of the dryer. So we're going to start with these two screws. I'm going to take two screws off the bottom of this front panel and two screws off the top and two screws off the inside. See the inside right there where I'm pointing. And these screws are um, security bit screws. They might look like they'll also work with a Phillips head, but they're actually square security bit tools. So you might need to get that special bit. I'm going to see if I can do a shortcut here and just let this panel hang once I've got it out of the way. Otherwise, there's several other wires you need to take apart. Um, this front panel needs to come off now. Two more screws for the front panel. See that right in the middle of your screen there, and there's one on the other side. And then these steel clips are the main means that hold the front panel on. There's two pretty big, strong steel. There's four, actually, two on each side. They all look like that right in the middle of your screen. Okay, so front panel off. Let me, let me go over that again for you. It's like two, 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 two screws, two screws, two screws, two screws. So two that attach to this plastic piece on the top, two down below. These are all those security bits, I think. Two about six inches down inside here. And then two on this top, let me, on this top part, which I call like a hingy part, two there, and then it just lifts right off. It's got these metal clips, whoops, four of these metal clips, one, two, two on the other side. Now, um, you've got a big part of the job done by now. Now you have to pull the drum out. Take the rear panel off, two screws, and depending on how your dryer is set up, you may or may not have this exhaust uh, vent here. It might come out over here, but mine I had to go out the side. And you're going to reach in, and there's a tensioner pulley right there. And you're going to push on that to release the belt. Now these, this whole pulley mechanism, it's not screwed in tight. It just sits, kind of sits there. So be careful, it doesn't fall out of place. I'm gonna need two hands to take the tension off this. Okay, now that the belt is off, 
we're going to lift the drum out. Uh, one more thing. This little drum catch thing here has to come out. Okay, that gets the drum out. Now, let me give you this little froggy tip to get the drum out of that rear bearing. I used a little pry bar and I didn't have to put very much on it, but I just put a pry bar here and under the lip of the drum right there where my finger is and it pops out. It kind of like there's a little compression or pressure in there that holds it in and you have to pop it out of there and then the drum comes forward. It's not very heavy, but it's kind of awkward and a tight fit. And um, when I tried to get mine out, the belt hung up on the pulley right there. So just make sure if you're pulling it out and it feels like it's hung up on something, it's probably the belt on the on the pulley. Oops, where's the pulley? Pulley right. I'm trying to frame it for you. There, right exactly there in the middle of the screen, that pulley. Um, so now I'm going to get a shop vac and vac all this out. Um, and then uh, we'll get to re replacing the bearing. Okay, so assuming I have diagnosed this correctly, here's what happens is this plastic bearing uh, that holds that ball that I just showed you, it wears. It wears because it's, it's got this metal ball spinning in it every time you use the dryer. So eventually the plastic wears down so far that the metal ball hits this metal piece. So metal to metal, it's going to start squeaking. So the new ball is going to lift it. The new plastic bearing is going to lift it up high. So there's no contact with the um, metal. And I've got all, these are all new pieces. This, this, the, the metal ball part, which I'll show you there. All those are new pieces. So now we're just going to put all those new pieces on there and then put it back together. Okay, had a little lunch, now let's put this back together. So, three screws, again, using that special security bit, or maybe you can get away with a Phillips head plot, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm not sure, you're gonna have to figure that out yourself. But those three, loosen them up, and then you're gonna put one hand one side, one hand the other side, and remove that ball. Now this is a little tricky bit here. The new, plate does not have threads cut in these holes so what you're going to do and what's been recommended by um, something I saw on another video use the old screws to cut the threads in this plate it'll be a little hard to turn but you should be able to cut threads in this plate and then take those old screws and get rid of them and then use the new screws to tighten it. So I'm going to go out to my workbench and uh, do that. Actually, uh, change of plan. These old screws have that, whoops. Yeah, they have that cut out that fits a security bit uh, or, a, or a Phillips head maybe. But anyway, I like them better because the security bit um, does not have as much likelihood of stripping as a Phillips. Uh, so I'm going to reuse the old screws. And they'll tighten up better. I'll use the new ones to cut the threads. Or maybe I'll use the old ones to cut the threads. What I'm doing is using this impact driver, uh, which is a wonderful tool to drive these screws that have the security bit head on them drive them through and it's way way easier than using a trying to use a phillips head or use these other screws that don't have the security um, feature uh, i don't know why when this is an official electrolux frigidaire type kit so i don't know why they give you these junky screws but anyway um, if you have a choice, reuse those old screws. Okay, so either you're going to need long arms like I do so that you can hold the 
gun or the screwdriver on one side and hold that plate with the ball on it on the other side or you have to have a helper so I'll let you figure that out but uh, I got them all started a little bit of exposure problem there okay and uh, There's the new ball. I just gotta tighten them up. Don't strip them. Make sure you do tighten them all evenly so this thing is nice and squared off and flat up against the drum. I noticed when I did mine, there was like a little gap on one side. Um, so don't strip them, but you do have to make sure you get them tight. All right? Otherwise, this thing is going to be cocked and it'll be wobbly or something or it'll wear out the new bearing too fast. So now that's got a nice, even, tight uh, measurement on all sides. So now we're going to do the other bit there and put it back together. Now on mine, this is a 5 16 socket. Okay, it's not a Phillips. It's not a security. It's a 5 16th socket, so that's what you'll need. You, Whatever your fasteners are, that's what you need to do, but they might not all be the same on every make, model, year of dryer. Okay, so when I unscrewed them, this fell off, and the little ball bearing popped out of there, which is the old one, which doesn't really matter, but uh, if you don't want to lose that, have somebody catch it. Again, you, you know, th in this case, my arms weren't long enough to work both sides. Uh, so you're going to put some lubricant in that little hole right there in the new bearing, and that's going to hold the ball bearing into the bearing. So do that like that. I used a little too much. It doesn't matter. You're going to fill it up with grease anyway. But stick that ball bearing in there like that. And then reinstall this. This goes on the inside. That goes on the outside and use the new 516 screws. So one quick correction right now. The ball bearing goes on that side of the plastic, not that side. Okay. And when you put the little clip, okay. Hmm. When you put that right there back on the bumps go to the outside not uh so let me show you see the little bump part there goes to the outside like that down there to the outside the bump put the rest of the grease into the bearing and now we're ready to put the drum back in. Just do the reverse of taking it out. I'll show you if I get stuck or have a little trick. Time out. Froggy left a little part out. That's this part right here. It goes on the inside and those two long screws will hold it on there. And that's a support for the bearing. So it's actually a very, very important part. Sorry about that. Um, so let's take this apart, put this in, and then put it back together. Everything else was okay. I realized the reason I left that out is because I was looking at a YouTube video um, from an older machine that did not have this brace included um, in their uh, demonstration of a repair. Uh, so these things do vary from year to year. Um, so make sure, number one, you order the exact right part kit for your machine and then uh, when you're looking at these YouTube videos you might have to adjust your repair um, add or subtract something depending on your model year so now that's correct and the reason I, I wanted to show you you see how far up the white bearing sticks from the metal and the one I took out it was worn even so that's how much wear happened this is probably <sighs> A 10 year old dryer, give or take, probably about 10 years old.
And make sure that belt has the rib side down, the smooth side outside, and make sure it's far enough back you can see the wear mark uh, before you try to put it over the uh, tensioner. That's how, that's how it should look going around the motor pulley and over the tensioner pulley, okay? Now the front goes back on. Line up those steel pegs that go into these holes. There's four of them. Now for mine, to put the front lid, uh, front cover back on, you hang it from the top. See these tabs here? You hang it from the top and then let it swing into the bottom. Yours might be different. You'll know you've got it right when all the pins are lined up and clip in. Now, there are some small differences between screws that go into plastic and screws that go into metal. Um, they're, they're bigger, wider threads for the plastic ones, but just make sure when you take them apart, you mark them, keep them separated. There's not a huge difference, but there's some difference. Uh, those two more for the bottom. Focus, see those two little ones there in the middle of the screen? Make sure your wires go back through any wire guides. This is a zip zip tie that I put in there. I probably cut the original out, but we're going to keep them away from the drum. Okay. Okay, that's running, that's heating. I just got to shove it back another foot or so into where it belongs and uh, if there's anything you need to know about how I put it back together, just refer to how I took it apart because it's just the reverse of that. Okay, give me a thumbs up or a like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy. Be safe, have fun. I will put some links in the comments to any tools or parts that I used. Okay, bye-bye.